Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Tingyun is widely known as one of the best supports in the game with a very highly regarded reputation thanks to her simple but very impactful support utilities. In fact, this Foxian ambassador is so good, enemies love targeting her even among teammates with higher aggro because they all know she's the real threat here. So to help you get your Tingyun ready for battle, this guide will cover her kit and traces, idolins, best relic and light cone builds, team synergies, and gameplay tips. Let's begin. Tingyun is a 4-star Harmony Lightning support unit that provides huge single target buffs and energy regeneration for an ally. Let's go through her traces and see what makes her a great support. Tingyun's skill targets one ally to grant them the Benediction buff for 3 turns, which you can track by the stacks on Tingyun's HUD. This can only exist on one ally at any time, making Tingyun exclusively a single target buffer. First, Benediction increases the affected ally's attack based on a percentage of their base attack. But this attack buff also has a threshold or cap based Based on a percentage of Ting Yun's current attack. For example, let's say Ting Yun's skill is level 10, so the multipliers are as follows. 50% of the target's base attack, up to 25% of Ting Yun's current attack, and she's targeting Jing Liu with a base attack of 1,261. 50% of that is 630, so that's the maximum potential buff. But in order to reach that threshold, Ting Yun would need 2,520 attack, since 25% of that is 630. If Ting Yun's attack were much lower, then the attack buffs potential would also be limited. Note that if Ting Yun receives attack buffs from other teammates, that would also count towards the attack stat threshold of Ting Yun's buff. So she doesn't necessarily need to have that much attack by default to reach the maximum if there are external sources of attack applied to Ting Yun. When you're at high levels of investment, 2400 to 2700 attack on Ting Yun will generally cover most scenarios to get a max or near maximum buff potential. As a shortcut, it would be around double the target space attack, though reaching that would likely likely mean that Ting Yun will sacrifice survivability in exchange for attack stats, which also has its downsides. We'll discuss more about this in the build section. Additionally, Benediction has a second effect wherein if an ally attacks, they will deal an additional instance of lightning damage that scales on their attack stat. It's another source of damage, and being affected by the attack buff of Benediction too is nice synergy. It also scales on the buffed character's other damage-related stats, like crit stats and relevant damage bonuses, making it have even more damage potential depending depending on the ally's stats. Follow-up attacks can also trigger this, like Clara's counter-attack, Himiko's AoE follow-up, and the like. However, if the unit does a multi-target attack, the coordinated attack will only hit one random enemy. Also, it will not deal any toughness damage to a lightning-weak enemy. So in many cases, while the Benediction buff is active, Ting Yun does basic attacks to provide a constant source of skill points, then you'll want to refresh the Benediction buff right after it expires. However, there can still be cases where you might benefit from refreshing her skill buff even if there's still a turn remaining in its duration. Some units in particular, which I'll give examples of later, may have mechanics that need you to refresh the buff earlier. Or you might want to get the 30 energy generated by her skill rather than the basic attack's 20 energy, if you see an opportunity to recharge her ultimate faster. With her Ascension 2 ability, this also buffs Ting Yun's speed, so it'll result in faster turn cycling. Anyway, it's a case-to-case -case basis, and you will notice if and when this is necessary as you spend time playing with your team. Additionally, her talent provides an extra source of damage, since whenever Ting Yun basic attacks, the ally with Benediction will also deal coordinated lightning damage with her. This damage also scales on the affected ally's stats. As you can see here, Ting Yun's basic attack does two hits, which are pretty low, but then you have this bigger damage number that did a critical hit, which came from Imbibitor Lune. Moving on, Ting Yun's ultimate targets one ally to instantly regenerate 50 energy for them and give a huge damage percent bonus for two turns. It's a very simple ability, but one that has immense benefits. The damage percent increase obviously just helps increase their raw damage, and again, this also affects the coordinated lightning attack from her benediction buff for added synergy. More importantly, restoring a huge portion of a unit's energy helps speed up their ultimate rotation, and the advantages can range from boosting their damage potential to making them easier to manage. While this will typically be recharging your DPS, it can definitely still be used outside of damage scenarios, like using Ting Yun to regenerate a healing or shielding ultimate if you need emergency survival measures. Do note though that the energy she gives to allies this way is not affected by their ERR stat, so the 50 energy provided, or 60 if you have her E6, will always be a flat value. Then for her technique, Ting Yun instantly regenerates 50 energy outside of combat. This helps get her ult ready at the start of battle. When you're in the simulated universe, 
Beast, Forgotten Hall, or Memory of Chaos boss levels, you'll want to use this to fill her energy up. As for Tingyun's Ascension bonus abilities, her Ascension 2 ability lets Tingyun gain a 20% speed increase for one turn after using her skill, which is great to help cycle her turns faster. The Ascension 4 ability increases her basic attack damage by 40%. It's okay, but ultimately a very small damage bump since she's not built for dealing damage anyway. And the Ascension 6 ability lets Tingyun regenerate 5 energy at the start of her turn, which is very helpful for her energy recharge needs for better ult rotations. Related to this, there's a gameplay tech where you can spam her ult at the start of battle before she takes her turn. This is in order to drain her energy and get that extra energy at the start as well. It's something you can do to maximize her energy gain, but you don't always have to since there can also be cases where you can hold it off to apply the damage bonus duration at a more optimal time. For example, you can let Jingliu enter the spectral state first so that her advance forward won't consume the duration by one turn. Tingyun's minor stat bonuses are composed of lightning damage, defense, and attack. The defense and attack are the stats you want the most to improve her tankiness and to help reach a higher attack buff. For her trace leveling priority, prioritize both her skill and ultimate levels as these are the main sources of her buff multipliers. Then you can level up her talent with her basic attack being the lowest priority. Tingyun is already amazing at E0, but thankfully, Idolans give very good benefits that make her an even more stacked support. With E1, if an ally with Benediction uses their ultimate, they gain a 20% speed increase for one turn. This is generally great for any unit to help them move faster, though be careful if the burst of speed might affect any turn order you're strictly trying to follow. E2 lets an ally with Benediction regenerate 5 energy after defeating an enemy, which can be triggered once per turn. As long as there are easy to kill enemies, this can be triggered fairly consistently, thereby providing an extra energy source for your DPS. E3 increases her ultimate and basic attack levels. E4 increases the damage multiplier of Benediction's coordinated attack increase by 20%. To be clear, this does not affect the attack buff, but rather the extra lightning attack dealt by the buffed ally. Nonetheless, it still results in more damage output. E5 increases her skill and talent levels, and lastly, E6 makes Tingyun's ultimate regenerate 10 more energy. This is an amazing final Eidolon that makes her an even better battery, and that extra 10 energy can definitely go a long way for setting up faster ultimate rotation times for some allies. Since we've covered her kit, let's also check out how her energy generation and rotation times will be like. We'll assume that she has a maxed out 5 star ERR rope and an unlocked Ascension 6 bonus ability. Tingyun generally takes 4 turns to fully recharge her ult, with rare cases of 3 turns if she gets extra energy sources or gets hit for 20 energy. If you add a high superimposed meshing cogs or memories of the past light cone which generates extra energy, this can enable a consistent 3 turn ult under specific scenarios. Another light cone scenario is with the S1 but the battle isn't over which gives 10% ERR. If Tingyun gets hit for at least 11 energy, that can also help her achieve a 3 turn ult rotation. A shorter rotation has great benefits since that means she can battery her ally and keep up the damage bonus buff more frequently, but 4 turns is still a good standard baseline and why using an ERR rope and unlocking her ascension 6 ability are very important. Now let's move on to Tingyun's Relic build, starting with her stats. For both the Body and Planar Sphere, they can be HP or Defense for Survival or Attack to increase the potency of her Benediction Attack buff. As a rule of thumb, if you're a lower level player whose survival supports may not be as optimized yet, going for HP or Defense for at least one of the pieces, or even both, might be more advisable to better ensure Tingyun's survivability. You also want to balance having both HP and Defense stats, so you can opt for an HP main stat if you get a lot of Defense from substats already or vice versa. However, when your team's survivability is more secured, as your supports are more leveled up and built, then you can start trying to focus on raising Tingyun's attack stat to maximize her attack buff, which could mean making her body or sphere piece into attack or possibly both. Again, a general goal would be 2400 to 2700 attack depending on how high your DPS's attack stats are. Be mindful if Tingyun is already receiving attack from other sources as well, since those still count towards the Benediction's attack buff threshold. Try to also keep backup defense or HP pieces if you might need to switch back to a tankier build. For the feed piece, you want speed for faster turn cycling, which lets her generate skill points, recharge her ultimate, and refresh buffs as needed faster. While for the link rope, you definitely want ERR as discussed previously. For her substats, you're mainly looking for speed to hit relevant breakpoints, defense and HP for survivability, attack to help her reach her attack buff cap, and effect resistance to help prevent crowd control debuffs and reach the effect resistance requirement of the broken keel set if ever. Balance your 
defense, HP, and attack substats depending on what her main stats are. Then for her relic sets, the most recommended set is the 4-piece messenger traversing hacker space. The 2-piece gives a 6% speed bonus, and more importantly, the 4-piece effect lets her boost your entire team's speed by 12% for one turn after using her ultimate, giving Tingyun additional support ability. This is more or less going to be your end goal target for your optimized Tingyun build unless a better support relic set releases down the line. Aside from that, you still have good alternatives available. The 4-piece Musketeer of Wild Wheat gives 6% speed, 12% attack, and a basic attack damage bonus, all of which Tingyun appreciates. For players just starting out in the game, you do get musketeer pieces as rewards or loot sometimes, so you can just passively farm its pieces. Alternatively, you can just combine sets of speed, HP, defense, attack, or damage reduction. This gives you the flexibility to choose pieces with the right main stats and good substats and can be more efficient with your trailblaze power as you don't have to commit to farming a full set. Next, for her planar ornament sets, there are three viable options. First is the broken keel, which gives 10% effect resistance and a 10% team-wide crit damage buff if the user reaches 30% effect resistance. This will require you to get 20% effect resistance from substats, but that's a good thing for Tingyun anyway to help prevent debuffs on her. Second, the Fleet of the Ageless gives the user 12% HP and an 8% team-wide attack buff if the user has 120 speed. Like the Broken Keel, it provides a bit more survivability for Tingyun and a team damage boost. These two sets are also pretty efficient to farm since they share a simulated universe world with the Rutilant Arena and Space Ceiling Station respectively, which are good damage sets for many DPS units. Third is the Sprightly Von Wack. It gives 5% ERR which can help with earlier alt recharge times as discussed in the rotation section, and it advances the user's action at the start of battle if they have at least 120 speed which helps Tingyun move sooner. Unfortunately, this set isn't as efficient to farm since it shares a world with Italia set which is a much more niche set. Now let's go through her light cone recommendations. For 3 star free to play options that are cheap to level up, you can either use Chorus or Meshing Cogs. Chorus gives a straightforward permanent attack buff for the entire team, whereas Meshing Cogs lets the user generate additional energy once per turn upon attacking or getting hit. As discussed in the rotation section, this can enable a consistent 3 turn ult rotation time. However, being 3 star light cones, they have low base stats, so that will impact Tingyun's survivability and attack buff cap. Moving on to the 4 star options, an F2P option option is the past and future light cone that you can get from the Forgotten Hall shop. While it can provide a damage bonus to another ally, that only triggers when Tingyun uses her skill and only to the next ally taking their turn. You'd have to ensure that Tingyun will consistently take her turn before the DPS, otherwise the passive will be wasted on a unit that isn't meant to deal damage. As for gacha light cones, we have a couple of good options. Memories of the past gives energy once per turn when the user attacks and a break effect bonus so it's not really useful for Tingyun. The extra energy generation is similar to meshing cogs, but the condition is now limited only to an attack. If you get superimpositions of this, it can offer similar rotation benefits as meshing cogs but with higher base stats. Dance 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 is also a great option as this advances the entire team whenever the user casts their ultimate. This will help rotate your allies' turns faster to let you move ahead of the enemy and potentially get in more turns in Forgotten Hall or MOC cycles. A niche option is Planetary Rendezvous, which boosts your entire team's lightning damage when equipped on Ting Yun. Obviously, you should only use it if she's comped with a lightning DPS, but it's a great and very convenient damage boost for them. Carve the Moon, Weave the Clouds is the battle pass choice featuring Tingyun herself. It gives a random team buff every turn while having slightly higher base stats than other 4 stars. Attack, crit, and ERR buffs are all generally useful and it's one of the better BP rewards to prioritize. However, it's not necessarily a must-have or massive upgrade since the previous 4 star options are very good nonetheless. Finally, the 5 star standard light cone but the battle isn't over gives the user very high base stats and ERR, has a skill point refunding mechanic, and gives a damage bonus to the ally after the user's turn. The ERR and skill point refunds are really good effects by themselves already. However, the damage bonus has a similar condition to past and future, so that'll require similar considerations to Tingyun's turn order if you want to fully utilize this. Now let's discuss Tingyun's team comp synergies and considerations. What's great about her is that she just works so well in so many teams, as her buffing and battery utilities are generally appreciated by so many DPS units. But since she's primarily a single target buffer, she functions best in hyper carry teams, which consists of one main DPS accompanied by three supports that will maximize the DPS's damage and keep the team alive. The template will typically have two damage amplifiers, so Tingyun can occupy one of those slots accompanied by either a harmony or nihility unit. Then a fourth support will be an abundance or preservation unit for survival. How often you'll have to use her skill to refresh the benediction buff depends largely on how fast the DPS cycles through their turn. 
turns. Otherwise, Ting Yun will do basic attacks to supply your team with skill points and deal a bit more damage from her talent's coordinated attack. And as I mentioned before, her benediction buffs extra lightning damage scales with the buffed character's stats. So for lightning DPSs that are built with lightning damage percent boost stats, the extra damage can have more damage potential on them. For our erudition, hunt and destruction units, and even some nihility units like a hypercarry Kafka or Welt, Ting Yun will simply have, at the very least, great synergy with them. Since discussing each of them will take pretty long, those details can just be reserved for the videos on those specific units, though there are some special considerations we can note for now. Since Blade's ability scalings are more unique in that HP is more important than attack, Ting Yun's benediction buff on him isn't as impactful, and the extra attacks from benediction will be noticeably weaker since Blade will have a low attack stat. Regardless, the fact that she can buff damage percent bonus and battery him is still useful and still makes her a viable teammate. The same can be said for future units that will also release that aren't primarily attack scaling. You also would want to be mindful of her buff's duration and timing on some units that have advanced forward effects or special turn mechanics. For example, Jingliu and Sushang have advanced forward mechanics that let them do consecutive turns, which also means that buffs applied to them will expire faster than usual. Take Clara as an example of a follow-up attacker. Since she counters whenever an enemy attacks her, there might be a case where the buff has already expired, but an enemy attacks her before Ting Yun is able to refresh it, which makes the counterattack deal less damage. So if you want to reduce a downtime risk, you can just have Ting Yun refresh it even when there's one turn remaining, assuming you have enough skill points of course. Another special example is Jing Yuan and Lightning Lord. Since Lightning Lord acts as a separate unit that still uses buffs applied on Jing Yuan, if the benediction buff expires right before the Lightning Lord moves, then its attack won't receive the buff leading to lower damage potential. In that case, you'll want to reapply Ting Yin's skills sooner to ensure the buff will also be present during Lightning Lord's turn. For teams that have two main damage dealers, Ting Yin might not be as efficient due to her single target abilities. For example, a Jing Liu and Blade dual DPS team or a damage over time or dot team with Kafka and Sampo. While she can technically still be used in such teams, there may be more preferable alternatives like units that give a team-wide attack buff or who debuff the enemies so you can instead amplify the damage of both your DPS units. In this last section, here's a summary of my observations about Ting Yin's autoplay behavior. Some players might recall that in version 1.2, there was a patch note wherein the logic of Ting Yin's auto battle behavior was patched. That was because before that, there were some complaints about how Ting Yin would waste using her skill repeatedly even if the buff was far from expiring, or worse, how she would target supports instead of the DPS. For instance, she would target Locha, a healer, probably because she was programmed to target the ally with the highest attack stat. So how does the auto battle behavior now after those changes? Well, from what I can see, Ting Yin's AI is pretty functional now. Assuming you're on a hyper carry team with a clear DPS unit, she will now properly target them, and as long as the benediction buff is up, she will do basic attacks during her turn and only reuse her skill when the buff has expired. Then, like most other units, she'll use her ultimate as soon as it's fully recharged. This behavior is generally what a manual controlled Ting Yin will look like, so it's a passable way to autoplay. But this won't account for certain nuances discussed before, like needing to refresh her skill earlier due to special turn mechanics. For example, with Jing Yuan, some of Lightning Lord's attacks will be unbuffed because the AI Ting Yun doesn't consider how Lightning Lord will move right after Jing Yuan while the buff is about to expire. It's also possible that you can hold off on casting her ultimate so you can cast it at a time that better maximizes a damage bonus uptime. You might also prefer to wait for your desired target to drain their energy first, like if you're about to recharge their ultimate anyway so that they'll make more use of the 50 energy Ting Yun gives. These are more advanced player tactics, so I suppose that complexity is harder to cover in auto battle. There are also cases where her ultimate was ready, but if your DPS's energy is full too, she will still use her ult to target an ally that's lacking energy. Furthermore, while it's not that advisable to use Ting Yin in dual DPS teams due to her single target buffs, I was also curious about her targeting in such cases. Long story short, I tried different DPS combinations of paths and builds with different levels of investment in attack stats to see if there's a pattern I can identify on her priority targeting. I can only speculate, but as far as I can tell, the character's path and their stats, whether it's just attack or perhaps other stats as well, are the main factors. Results are too complicated to discuss here, so I decided to preserve my sanity and not try to investigate further, especially since you would generally use Ting Yun in a hyper carry team anyway, where the main DPS is very obvious and the AI will target them reliably anyway. So in summary, I think Ting Yun's individual AI is fairly reliable in a hyper carry team, albeit lacking more nuanced decisions with regards to optimally timing and maintaining her buffs. 
And that's it for this guide. It's clear why Ting Yun is a very popular unit as her combo of buffs are extremely valuable despite their simplicity and ease of use. Let me know in the comments what you think of Ting Yun, especially if you're on your way to building her. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!